This project is sponsored by PCBWay. This year, PCBWay celebrates its 11th anniversary of continuous progress and is organizing several activities. On that occasion, you can get exclusive coupons or you can start your PCB order for just $5 and get up to 50% off for 3D printing and CNC machining. You also get a special discount of on the selected items and share your project with community and get the sponsorship amount of up to 20 US dollars per project. PCBWay not only counts years but also builds a leg legacy of quality, reliability and partnership. Together, let's shape the innovations of tomorrow. Hello, Plasma Flame Generator is a device that utilizes the high frequency, high voltage output of a Tesla coil to create a continuous plasma discharge that resembles a flame. These plasma flames are formed by ionizing the air around the Tesla coil's discharge point. This Tesla coil is based on a Class E RF power amplifier that's tuned to the oscillated around 11 MHz in my case and generates about 150 kV volts output voltage. The main advantages of this type of high frequency solid state Tesla coils are that it can be powered from a low voltage DC supply, supply, it doesn't make much noise and you don't need to deal with high voltage primary power suppliers. An interesting property of high frequency high voltage outputs is, is its ability to produce a flame discharge uh, in which the ionized air plasma takes on the appearance of a candle flame. However, producing, producing a stable flame is tricky and requires a far bit of tuning. Now let me briefly, briefly explain how the device works. The heart of the circuit is the LC oscillator formed by L2 5 turns and C2 around 150 picofarads. The values of these components determine the oscillator's frequency. In my case, that is around 11 MHz. The voltage divider formed by VR1 and its 1 kilo ohm series resistor generates a 5 to 10 volts signal at the gate of IRFP 260N MOSFET to start the circuit oscillating. The MOSFET should be mounted on a relatively massive heat sink for efficient dissipation of the generated heat. Feedback via capacitor C2 triggers and sustains the oscillations. Zener diode and TVS both aim to prevent the voltage at the gate from exceeding the gate source voltage specification of the device. L1 have 30 turns of 0.5 mm enameled copper wire on a cylindrical former with diameter of 2.5 cm. The primary coil L2 consists of 5 to 6 turns of 1.5 mm uh, enameled copper wire on a 5 cm diameter former. Instead of a 150 picofarad 4 kV uh, capacitor, I used a variable capacitor from an old tube radio so I can make a fine adjustments very easily. For the value of the variable capacitor of 150 picofarads and the primary inductance of 2.4 Microhenry gives a frequency of approximately 11 MHz. The secondary coil con uh, contains approximately 75 turns of 0.5 mm enameled copper wire wound on a 30 mm PVC pipe. An M4 on 12 mm stainless steel bolt and brass a core nut is used the breakout point or as the breakout point or as top load. During the testing of the device X, I experimented with several types of secondary coils uh, with the oscillation frequency of the circuit ranging from 6.5 to 8 MHz. I got the best results with this small coil 
with 75 turns and I use it in the final version. It is interesting to mention that with this setup I managed to generate a plasma flame with relatively low power, specifically less than 70 watts. In this case the maximum flame, flame length is about 3.5 to 4 centimeters. As I mentioned earlier, although the circuit is very simple to make, the adjustments should be done very carefully since we are dealing with relatively high currents and frequencies. If you have the conditions, it is best to use a laboratory constant current source with a variable output voltage. The method of initial testing and adjustment is as follows. We set, the, we set the voltage of the power supply to about 10 to 12 volts and the current is limited to 1 ampere. Now we set the potentiometer in the far left position and start the power supply. If the circuit, circuit has no errors, the current should be approximately 0 amperes, like in this case. Uh, now we place a CFL bulb close to the secondary and gradually turn the potentiometer. At a certain point the bulb should light up, which is a sign that the circuit is oscillating and we can continue with further tuning. The current is about 0.5 amperes, so totally about 5 watts. Also if, if the bulb does not light up, at a half turn of the potentiometer we should try to set the variable capacitor in the desired position to oscillate the circuit. To avoid unwanted damage by burning the MOSFET, we should continue testing by gradually increasing the voltage, uh, limiting the current to around 2 amperes. We try to get a stable plasma flame by tapping the top load tip with an isolated screwdriver.
with this uh, in this particular case the lowest voltage at which the plasma flame was formed is 46 volt to 47 and it works quite stable at 40 volts and a current of about 1.8 ampere With these parameters, the device can work for a long time without a risk of damage to any of other elements and most often the MOSFET. In the following I will demonstrate the generation process and the functioning of the plasma flame generator as well as evidence of the extremely high temperature of the plasma uh, which almost instantly melts metals such as solder wire and copper.
The simplest way to test the oscillation frequency of the circuit is with an oscilloscope by placing a short wire on the oscilloscope probe to act as an antenna that receives the electromagnetic radiation generated by the secondary. As we see the frequency is 10.6 MHz. And finally a short conclusion, this is the plasma flame generator based on a class E RF power amplifier Tesla coil, offers a fascinating and relatively, relatively safe way to create a continuous plasma discharge. With careful tuning this device can produce a stable plasma flame with interesting properties demonstrating the powerful effects of high frequency high voltage electricity. Safety note, please do not attempt to recreate the experiment shown on this video unless you are familiar with high voltage safety techniques. Direct current even above 60 volts may be lethal even when the AC supply voltage has been disconnected due to the stored energy in the capacitors. I have no responsibility on any hazards caused by this circuit. Be very careful.